show business today, acclaimed across the country in theaters and nightclubs as Mr. Hypnosis. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present the Lottie. to Coeur Before we do get into the show tonight, there are a couple of points that I would like to explain to you. You see, I feel by understanding these particular things, then you are going to understand what you actually see. First of all is the fact that hypnosis is not a state of sleep. When a person becomes hypnotized, they do not become unconscious. They do not become a zombie. They are not oblivious to their surroundings. In fact, you could better classify hypnosis as an altered state of consciousness. It's a rather peculiar state of mind that's brought about by the individual's concentration to where the subconscious mind is brought up and forward to avoid it may be influenced by suggestion. You see, physically, the individual does observe sleep. The body itself takes on every characteristic of a very deep, natural, normal sleep. Mentally, however, they do not. If they actually did lose consciousness, as we do in natural sleep, then they couldn't hear my voice. And if they couldn't hear my voice, they wouldn't respond to any type of suggestion. Now, in a demonstration of this nature, I do ask for members of the audience to, to volunteer to come up and to allow themselves to be hypnotized. This is what is actually termed an audience participation type of show. Now, if you do come up, I don't do anything to embarrass you. In fact, I think you'll find it to be a very fun, fun experience. And it'll be educational as well. You see, you're going to learn a great deal about hypnosis. You'll learn more about the subject in the time that I do have you up here than I could ever begin to try to teach you. Because you feel it. You have that personal experience. You gain an insight that you really could gain in no other way. And at the end of each demonstration, as my personal way of saying thank you to those who have volunteered, and at the same time as my way of demonstrating what really can be done with hypnosis, I take time with each individual to apply post-hypnotic suggestion to help them with any particular problem or habits that they might have. For example, maybe you'd like to stop smoking. Now, if you wholeheartedly do not want to stop smoking, it doesn't make much sense to come up here and ask me for that post-hypnotic. Because if I give it to you, all that will happen is cigarettes are going to taste absolutely miserable for a couple of weeks. But you'll fight your way through. You'll keep right on smoking. You see, I can make the cigarettes distasteful. And I can give you the willpower to stop. But once I've done those two things for you, it is up to you to exert that willpower, to actually throw the cigarettes into the trash can, and to make an honest effort to stop. Maybe you'd like to lose some weight. Maybe you'd like to stop biting your fingernails. Maybe you suffer from insomnia. Maybe you'd like to have more self-confidence. Or perhaps you're planning on learning something new. Further in your education, you'd like to have a more retentive memory. Or maybe you'd like to learn the science of the mind that we refer to as self-hypnosis. This is where you learn how to control and influence your own subconscious mind. Now, I don't step into the medical fields. Many people do come up with very serious emotional and psychological problems. This particular type of thing I do not handle up here on the stage. See, first of all, I really don't feel that it's anybody else's business knowing what your personal problems are. And then secondly, I don't know you personally. And in the period of time that I have you up here with me, there's really no way I can gain enough insight in your psychological makeup to handle that particular type of thing. But I will be more than glad to help you break a habit or to bring about a specific personality change. Now, before I do ask for the volunteers, there is one thing I want very clearly understood by everyone in the room. <clears throat> there are three types of people that I cannot hypnotize. And if you mentally should place yourself within any one of these three categories, I request that you remain right in your seat. Number one is an idiot. <laughs> well, you see, people have the idea that a weak-minded person should be more susceptible to hypnosis. The actual hypnotic state itself is produced by the individual's ability to concentrate on one thing. An idiot, simply too scatterbrained, to concentrate long enough to be hypnotized. 
I hope that you mentally do not place yourself within this category. But then again, you are a better judge than anyone else. The second type of person I cannot hypnotize is someone who is intoxicated. Now, I do like everybody in. I like you seated. And I like you to have a few drinks before I come on to do the show. Now, this, this in itself is an aid. It does help you to relax. It takes off the edge. See, technically, alcohol is a depressant and reacts its way to the nervous system. But too much alcohol in the body, and then it does begin to affect the mind. And we get right back to the idiot stage. <laughs> so if you've had a little too much to drink, remain in your seat. Come on some other time when you have the full opportunity of being hypnotized. And then the third type of person I get at hypnotized, which is the one I would say that I really most frequently encounter. Invariably, any time that you feel with a group of people, due to the personality factor, you're always about to have one or two of these within the group. The wise guy. The individual who comes up, sits down in one of the chairs, and then is going to try to prove that they have a stronger will than I do. Well, forget it, because I really don't go for a contest of wits. You see, I'm working with a whole group of people, and I just don't have the time to waste on one individual. It's not fair to those who have come up very seriously wanting to be hypnotized, because it means that I won't be able to work properly or efficiently with them. And then it's not fair to the rest of you, who would really like to see what hypnosis is all about. Because if I am wasting time with an individual, and I find that I'm running over on the schedule, then I simply have to cut part of the show up. So if you have any idea of playing games, forget it. Just stay in your seat. I admit, I cannot hypnotize you against your will. In fact, it only takes common sense to figure that out. If I don't have your full cooperation, how on earth could I really ever expect to gain your full concentration? Now, before I get to Google here, I want to do something with all of you. I would like to have each one of you come up and personally experience hypnosis. As I said, there's no better way than I could teach you. Unfortunately, we don't have enough room up here for all of you. And even if theoretically we could get you all up here, who would be left to watch? <laughs> <laughs> now, what I'm about to show you now will not hypnotize you, so don't get excited. Do try it, however, because it's going to impress in your mind the point of concentration that is necessary to produce the hypnotic state. In fact, what it'll really do, it'll show you just how well you personally can concentrate on one particular thing. I want you all to sit up straight in your seat, place your feet so they're flat and firm on the floor. Okay, now I want you to place the palms of your hands together, and I want you to interlace your fingers, and I want you to let your thumbs slide so they cross across the top of your hands. Now, in a moment, I'm going to have each one of you start to stare at your thumbs. The idea of staring at your thumbs is to develop a very fine point of visual concentration. This, however, has a tendency to confuse some people. Because they have two thumbs. <laughs> and they're not quite sure which one to stare at. Just pick a thumb makes no difference which. Stretch your hands now out in front of you like this. Come on, elevate them from the table. I know that you're strong enough to lift them. In fact, bring them up high into your line of vision. Push your hands away from you so that your arms are perfectly straight. All right, here we go. Here we go. I want each one of you now just to start to stare at your own thumbs. I want you to stare, and I want you to actually concentrate all of your visual attention on your own thumbs. Do not look up at me or anyone else in the room. All of your visual concentration locked very intently on your thumbs, not one. One squeeze your hands together. Keep your eyes locked on your thumbs at all times. Keep a very, very constant pressure now, too. Do squeeze your hands tighter. Feel the muscles in your arms, your hands beginning to tighten. Three. Three, squeeze your hands tighter. Yes.